Hey, what's up guys? Hope everyone is doing well. Uh, happy New Year's. I know I'm a little bit late, but <clears throat> 2020. Uh, it's January 16th, 17th. Uh, actually the 18th. Well, I'm way off. Okay. Um, hope everyone is doing well. Hope everyone in Australia is doing well. Um, crazy situation going on down there. Hope all my Australian peeps are safe. And yeah, crazy stuff. Um, but that's not what I'm here talking about. Not the weather, not global warming, although it was damn cold here, so... Sucks, hate the winter, all that. Anyway, let's get into the music. Um, if you can hear it in the background, this is what... I'm listening to Fabiano Island, Fabiano Orchestra, wow. Butterfly Island. This is from 1980 on the Frank R. Records label. Not really familiar with this label, although really cool label. Um, yeah, fantastic. Sort of French, West Indian, jazz funk fusion. Um, how do I describe this? Kind of hard to describe, I guess. Although, yeah, I guess jazz fusion. Very rhythmic, um, very warm sounding, which is great for me this time of year. Um, great, great energy on here. I love it. The cover kind of maybe looks like you know, world music, something. I don't know. But it's fantastic jazz. Um, and it's spiritual, it's spacey, to just straight up great fusion so highly recommend you check this out um thank you to scott by the way scott may up with this one so thank you scott you probably won't see this but in case you ever do highly appreciate it so that cover sorry i kind of reset my camera headphones so sorry if the picture's a little bit off but kind of a cool uh Cool. Huge group of players on this. That's all the players that are in this. Pretty cool. And definitely a Zen orchestra, you know. But yeah, fantastic, fantastic music. Highly recommend this. It was reissued by um, Superfly. So I'm pretty sure those are still pretty affordable copies. But um, the original sounds good too, so I have no problems with the original. I'm sure the reissue sounds great too, though. They always do an awesome job. So moving on from that, next up we have the. Ralph Kuhn group, Ralph, 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 Ralph Kuhn, I always say Ralph, even though it's not Ralph, um, is on MPS from 1975, 76, something like that, mid 70s, 75, fantastic, let's check out that cover, really cool cover too, but the music on this is fantastic, um, excellent jazz funk, jazz fusion, as you can imagine, jazz rock, even free jazz at times, just a ripper all the way through, this is so so good excellent mix of styles and an awesome lineup on this too yeah uh, jared dudek albert mangelsdorf joaquin kuhn rat philip catherine uh daniel humer so really really great highly recommend this you can find it a bit hard to find in the states easier to find in europe i guess and not really expensive when it comes up but it just doesn't come up too often so but highly recommend checking this out. Ralph Kuhn Group. It's called uh, Total Space. I don't think I said the name of this one, Total Space. But love that artwork. Most of Ralph Kuhn stuff is fantastic, so. Next up here, Teru Masahino. This is also a 70s, I think it's 1970 actually. Um, Alone Together. So this man put out five records just in 1970. <clears throat> Just in that one year, he put out five records. He's got a lot of music out there. Um, but this record is amazing. Nice mix of jazz, uh, modal, post bop kind of stuff I like. But also hits more free improvisation, sort of avant-garde. Um, backed by a group of, I believe, all American musicians. Yep, so you got Steve Grossman on here, Harold Mayburn, Richard Davis, and Motohiko Hino is on, on drums as well. So the one non American musician, but other than that, Fantastic. Really long, sort of spacey tracks. Um, let the musicians open up and really do their thing. Really, really good though. It's got a cool little booklet inside here. Oh, sorry, I don't want to tear it. But... Yeah, and a cool booklet, which kind of shows everything. But yeah, highly recommend it. Um, no OB, unfortunately, I wish. It does have the insert, which counts as like doubles as the, in the booklet, I guess they consider the insert but yeah I wish I had the OB I'm sorta of anal about when it comes to OBs I would love like to have my Japanese record with OBs I'm just weird like that but I know they're really hard to find so this record was just very well priced 
This is not actually on Columbia or sub label of Columbia called Tact. Tact series, Tact Jazz series, which is a really cool sub label. I recommend checking that out. Um, new stream and jazz, so pretty simple but pretty cool label. So yeah, Karen Lucy, you know, you guys probably all know everything he does is pretty good, especially from around this time, so check it out. Um, this probably shouldn't even be in here because I just picked this up, haven't had a chance to check it out yet, although I do know the record. So it's um, Thomas Crosby and James Benton with Just Because. 80s uh, modal jazz, very, very good, out of New York City. Um, yeah, very, very good. This is still sealed, actually, so I haven't had a chance to listen to it, but I know it's good. I've heard it before, so I figured I'd just show it real quick. Um, both plays on here. Some pretty well-known guys. Steve, uh, John Hicks, Steve Grossman, once again, Gene Adler, and then James Benton on bass, Thomas Crosby on drums, so bassist and drummer. It kind of sounds like it's one dude, Thomas James, but it's actually two guys. Kind of strange how they did that. I don't know. It's a later uh, record from 1986, I think, but very, very good. Highly recommend this. Here into a uh, modal, um, spiritual-ish kind of jazz, but very good. Definitely check this out if you get a chance. I'll probably talk about this maybe a later date once I take it in a bit more, actually open it, but had enough music to hold me over, so. Next up here, Dharma Trio. Um, it's called Snoopy's Time, sorry, it's a good name of this. Very interesting cover, kinda, kinda creepy maybe. Scares me a little bit. This is on the SFP Records label out of France. Um, it's a French group, so obviously be out of France. Well, not obviously, but. Very, very good, excellent, um, sort of rhythmic group here. So you have bass, drum, bass, and piano. Very experimental jazz type stuff. Um, their second album, I believe this is. They also have a quintet formation and a quartet as well, so. Um, but yeah, experimental at times. Other times, more sort of in the vein of like, um, even Herbie Hancock is Chick Corea. And then other times, more like Paul Bray stuff. Kind of his later stuff with the use of like echo and reverbs, kind of what it reminds me of, but um, very, very good. Highly recommend this. I almost sold this actually because I got this for a good price and then almost flipped it, but I had a few people kind of <laughs> steer me away from that, which I'm glad they did. Um, I believe this was reissued as well, so you can pick this up fairly cheaply if you want it, but fantastic. Sorry, I hope the music's not too loud. I never know how to get it right. It always seems louder than it is, but anyway. Dharma Trio, very, very good trio. I know not everyone's into trio stuff, especially stuff that doesn't have sax. There's no horns on this at all. Like I said, just piano, bass, and drums, but it just works for me. It's just damn good, so check that out. Another one that usually doesn't work for me, but this just does. Um, guitar Jazz, not really my thing. Although I love his second record, Page 2, and this is his debut, Page 1, from Nathan Page. An excellent, excellent jazz guitarist. Um, basically a straight-up jazz fusion record, but done very, very well. Like I said, not usually, not usually my thing, but this just is amazing. This is probably, if not on par, just under page two for me, so definitely check out both of those records, page one and page two. Page two I might like a little bit better, but all sort of the same stuff, kind of jazz fusion. Um, this is from 77, I think the other one's from 78 or something. And then his own label. Hugo's music out of Florida. Unfortunately, he did pass away back in the early 2000s, I believe. So. Um, there's that. Speaking of people passing away, unfortunately, a lot of musicians passing away recently. Uh, Wolfgang Downer, R.I.P. Uh, Neil Peart, I believe, from Rush, which everyone's talking about. Don't see too much love out there in the wider community for Wolfgang Downer, but he was definitely, you know, one of the masters of electronic music, uh, an innovator, and just Definitely, definitely a big loss in that community, so rest in peace, for sure. Let me take a sip here before we move on. Alright, got a couple uh, Sunrise records here coming up, so <clears throat> got this one from my friend John. Thank you, John, if you happen to see this. He upgraded his copy of Jazz by Sun Ra Volume 1, his first record, I guess the first record, whatever, you never really know. 
because it's got so much stuff out there, but I guess consider it the debut record on Transition, which I love. By the way, I love this Transition label. It's amazing. Um, I guess these are known for having the labels fall off because there's no label on the B side, which the second, or third actually, this is the third copy I've seen that didn't have the label on the B side, or actually the first one didn't have any labels at all, so. Anyway, fantastic early summer. Um, sort of like, um, how to describe this, more post-pop, I guess. Not really as space jazz-ish as his, like, later stuff would, you know, kind of transform into, but fantastic, nonetheless. Um, supposed to go in the booklet, so I didn't have one. Sort of a budget copy, I got it for cheap. Like I said, my friend upgraded. I was able to pull this for a very decent price, so. But still, very happy to have it. Not in the best shape, but it plays amazing, so. Either way. This was actually retitled and later released by Delmark, because Delmark bought the Transition label. So they released it as Sun Song, with the, which is probably the more well-known record, or the more well-known version, I guess. So, if you happen to see Sun Song, it's actually this record. I think Sun Song actually has a sun on the front cover and whatever, but yeah. Um, fantastic. So the orchestra, I guess, just formed right before this record, although they've been playing together for a while, just with each other, they knew each other very well. Um, yeah, amazing, amazing stuff. So there's, a, I think, only one non-orchestra composition, and then the rest is all, like, Julian Priester does a, yeah, composed a track on here, which um, he was in the orchestra at the time, Richard Evans, um, Sun Ra, obviously, and then there's one which is by uh, Les Baxter, which is, he's usually known for soundtracks, and I think that was like a soundtrack track which they used uh, but yeah the music does kind of range a little bit from like hard bop to like third stream and then you can kind of get the initial senses of like his um you know space jabs space jazz excuse me sun Ra sound that he would be you know known for but <clears throat> this is the very early stages like i said recorded in 56 released in 57 so first record uh, but really really cool artifact just to have And then after that, we're basically going to the other end of the spectrum, 1985. This is when spaceships appear with the really cool hand-drawn cover. My friend Chris kind of said this looks like um, one of those uh, bullet hole stickers you see on like windows, on windshields, where it looks like the glass is shattered. I can kind of see that. Pretty cool. But yeah, um, definitely under an other end of the spectrum as opposed to that one. This one is sort of the same, I guess, as in the music varies a little bit. Although more so avant-garde, doing his like space jazz, cosmic jazz thing, free jazz. Um, this is a nice mix actually of Sun Ra tracks. And this is actually one of those hybrid releases where half of these tracks were on another record called Ra to the Rescue, which is probably the more well-known um, Sun Ra record out of the two. So I just grabbed this one because I never see it. So when spaceships appear, really cool. And plus I have the hand-drawn cover, so I have to get it. And I have shown this before, just a different version. So this is Sun Ra's art forms of, uh, art forms from Dimension Tomorrow. Sorry, I forget the name of that. This is actually on Toph. Toph, I've shown the, um, I've shown the Saturn Research, or El Saturn pressing before. The other one has a little bit of blue in the cover. This one's just straight up black and white. I love this cover, though. One of my favorite Sun Ra covers. So simple, just very, very well. Well done. Has the usual lineup on here. John Gilmore, uh, Marshall Allen, Pat Patrick. I believe uh, Clifford Thornton was playing with them at the time. Uh, Ronnie Boykin, Clifford Jarvis, and all the main guys. But what was cool about this record was had a cool little surprise inside, which I don't have a lot of, like, posters and, like, Firma from like stuff like that, but this was really cool. I can find it now. So I was taking the record out, and this just happened to slide out. This letter, which I could probably show the address, been a number of years now. So there's a date stamp on here from 1974 from Saturn Research in Chicago to Mark in Upland, California. Sorry, Mark, that's still your address. Probably shouldn't have shown that, but. And inside was this really, really cool flyer, which, like I said, I don't have a lot of this stuff, so it was awesome to get. Check that out. Pretty cool, right? Hot hits fresh from the sun. 
Hot hits fresh from the su from Sun Sound World. And has Discipline 2711, Universal Blue, Bad and Beautiful, Space of the Place. Just kind of, uh, you know, showcasing different records. And then has a book, a book of space wisdom by Sun Rock called Immeasurable Equation. And the book was $5 plus 50 cent shipping. And the records were all $5.98 plus 50 cent shipping. Amazing. <laughs> back in the day, I wish, I wish that it's around back then. I would have, oh man. Just so cool to have something like this though. Like, um, yeah, like I said, I don't have a lot of this stuff. So, and I have it in the letter with the stamp from 1974. Just very, very cool. So, happy to have that. I, I believe actually. Um, a friend of a friend, someone that I know as well, has the original poster to this, the original like, show poster this was based on, because I think this was based on an actual show poster they did. And I believe he has the original, um, I think, because I know I've seen something similar that he's showed before, so. Either way, great record, art forms. Definitely one of Sun Ra's best known records. Um, just wanted to show that insert in there. Just a couple more here. This one I got from um, that same friend, actually, Chris, who owns Elm City Sounds in New Haven. If you ever find yourself in New Haven, definitely check out Elm City Sounds. Excellent shop. He gave me this as a gift, a uh, Christmas gift, so thank you, Chris. Uh, we both love jazz, so Muriel Grossman, Reverence. Um, yeah, her latest record. I believe this is the same lineup that was on the last record, I'm pretty sure. So this one is more um, kind of celebrating and using sounds from um, Africa and African culture. I think the first track, yeah, Oken Ti is like a turn of phrase in African or something, but the music is definitely fantastic. So if you don't know Mary Grossman, you probably do, but modern day free jazz, uh, modal, spiritual jazz, very soulful. I love the uh, Hammond organ work on here for added flavor, very, very cool. Um, like I said, the music is definitely African influence, celebrating African music and culture. Um, great soloing on here, great um, great layering as well too. So I'm going to listen to this a couple times since I got it. So yeah, um, I didn't take it out of the plastic yet, that's why I'm not opening it up. But this is a gatefold. Um, so thank you, Chris. You probably won't see this either, but very much appreciated. Thank you for the gift. Very very cool. I um, don't usually buy newer jazz um, on vinyl. I usually like to stream it for newer stuff. It doesn't really have the same quality to me. That might sound stupid or whatever, but I just prefer streaming it. But I do buy certain stuff. Um, her last album I missed out on, unfortunately, called Golden... Golden Gems? What is it? Golden something, Golden Rule, that she put out last year, and then... This year came out with another one. That one I might like a little bit more, only because I've listened to it more. You know, I just started listening to this, so I streamed it a couple times and I just got this. So. And the last one here, I was in a real local record store and just there wasn't really much uh, grabbing my attention, so I picked this up. Just saw this randomly. This is Solar Plexus, uh, Randy Masters, Solar Plexus. I know there's a couple different groups called Solar Plexus, but this is Randy Masters' version on uh, Inner City. Pretty cool Inner City label there. Well, their name anyway, the Inner City label is regular. But So, if you don't know what Solar Plexus is, this is their third record, sort of a um, electric jazz fusion, I guess, outfit, I would say. Although this record in particular has Brazilian elements throughout. Very, very cool, heavy Brazilian sound. A lot of flute work. You can definitely tell just by looking at it. It's Brazilian influenced. But yeah, fantastic, fantastic stuff on here. So, like I said, jazz fusion with Brazilian influences. And then it also has vocals, although wordless vocals, sort of in the vein of like um, Ursula Dudek, I guess. She's probably most well known for doing the wordless vocal thing in jazz. Around this time, this came out in 79, so yeah, Solar Plexus, it's cheap, cheap heat, you know, this is under 10 all day, sometimes maybe even get it under 5 if you're lucky, I think this was 7 or 6 bucks, I don't know, anyway, very cool, cheap heat, jazz rock, jazz fusion, whatever, with Brazilian influences throughout, check it out for sure, um, you can stream it online, I think, so, 
So that's it. I'll probably cut it off there. Um, might have a few more to show, but I'll save that for the next time because it's already coming up on 20 minutes. So you guys are probably tired of listening to me. I hope you enjoy the background music. If you could hear it, just kind of plug this record again and say thank you to Scott because long time want list throw finally locked off. Fabiano Orchestra, Butterfly Island. Check this out. Go pick it up. Um, pretty sure it's still available on Superfly, and Superfly reissue, but dope, dope record, so. That's it, guys. Thank you for watching. Um, hopefully, we'll be back next month with some more stuff. Peace.